make sure to check out my Patreon for exclusive videos never before seen on YouTube. And don't forget to also check out the memberships on my channel page to join and gain access to perks and see videos early. Make sure to click the subscribe button and hit the bell and be notified of new videos. All the support goes to the production of the channel for better content. Now let's get into the video. In the known universe, there was two dominant species that ruled. Both of these species dominated over planets, selling them. One of them was a bit more primal-like, and they were called the Saiyans. The Saiyans were a race of warriors who loved the battle. They worked for Frieza, and they worked to pirate other planets and sell them for the highest bidder. The other part of the universe had the Viltrumites. They were a bit more advanced in technology, and they were more militaristic style. The Viltrumites believed in conquering planets and breeding with other species to basically grow their empire and become more powerful. Frieza saw this as a problem, as the Viltrumites were getting too confident. Frieza offered for them to come join him, but they declined. Now being an enemy of the Frieza Force, the Saiyans and the Viltrumites would battle it out, having a great civil war within the universe. Bardock himself has killed a few Viltrumites, as the Viltrumite leader, Thrag, was very powerful himself. He was almost able to match First Form Frieza in their battle. The Viltrumites were very dangerous, as they can breed very quickly, and they can travel through space, but Saiyans cannot. This war went on for generations, until one day, Bardock found a female Viltrumite, and he battled her. Bardock proved the upper hand, but he knows that she was different. She was an outcast amongst the other Viltrumites. Bardock decides to spare her, as Bardock sees that she's not willing to fight anymore. She would explain her reasoning, and would explain that because the Viltrumites are how they are, she just wants to live in a world of peace. They would get to know each other, and they would then fall in love, respecting each other. And then within a year's time, they would then have a son that Barak would name Kakarot. This young boy would be the perfect mix between a Viltrumite and a Saiyan, the only one that's ever been done. With the Viltrumites and the Saiyans still battling it out, as that war will not end anytime soon, Bardock knew that his son cannot grow up on either side, as it is too dangerous. Lord Frieza found out about what Bardock has done. As Frieza heard from the Saiyans of what Bardock did when he bred with the Viltrumites, and the Viltrumites heard it too, Bardock knew that he was going to be killed. Same with the wife as well. Bardock would then send his son to planet Earth and get him far away from all of these people. As then the Viltrumites and Saiyans would then show up, Bardock would battle all of them himself, proving how powerful he actually was, but sadly Frieza would then appear. And Frieza would then kill Bardock personally, as he sees it as a great insult for Bardock taking down much of his forces, while alongside the wife as well. Frieza would then kill both of them with a death ball, blowing up the planet that they were on, as he would laugh, saying look at the fireworks. Son Goku would be found by Grandpa Gohan. Now Son Goku would still be the rabid boy that we all know and love, until he would still hit his head like the original, as he's still an infant. As Son Goku would still grow up with Grandpa Gohan, the same as before, being taught basic things and how to survive. Sadly, Grandpa Gohan would still be killed by Son Goku when he transforms into an Uzaru, as Son Goku's half Saiyan, half Viltrumite. Even half Breeze can still have their tail and they can still transform. So sadly, Grandpa Gohan was killed, leaving Goku alone for years. All until Bulma would then find Goku the same way as before. Now we know that Viltrumites, their DNA does not really show up until they're a bit older, usually when they're about a teenager or so. So Goku is still around the same level of strength and everything else that he is in the original, as Son Goku here has never really use his Viltrumite powers yet. He doesn't even know he has powers like that. He does have the Saiyan powers, of course, since he has that since birth. But it took Mark until he was roughly 17 years old, 17 to 18 years old, until he actually got his Viltrumite powers, 
which Nolan, his father, said is normal, as it takes some time for half-breeds to kind of grow into their Vulture powers. So I'm going to assume that this is the same way for Son Goku. So a lot of the events for Dragon Ball would happen the exact same. Now, once when Goku was on Kami's lookout, after he defeated Demon King Piccolo, this is where a lot of changes are going to happen. Now, of course, that Son Goku would turn 17 within a few years and then turn to 18, but right before the tournament, before he would fight Tien and meet Chi Chi, Goku would start to have some strange things happening that Kami would very quickly notice. He felt way stronger. Son Goku, key wise, felt around the same, but his strength and speed was much, much faster, as he doesn't know why. As Son Goku can now fly, which that was not normal back then. Only some beings could actually fly. He could fly for some reason. His hearing was better. His sight was better. Everything was stronger. And he doesn't know why and can't figure it out. Also, during his training with Kami, whenever he would get attacked by Kami, it would barely even damage him. And the small damage that he would receive, he would regenerate way faster than he originally would, as some injuries might take him a week to recover, but this only took him about a day or two and he's fully recovered. Kami wonders if this is maybe because you're finally using your real power, maybe because you've reached adulthood, which Goku would agree, as Goku still thinks that he's a human, but Kami thinks otherwise. He thinks that he's definitely not normal. As do you think that Kami knew that Son Goku landed on Earth? from the space pod as Kami's the god of Earth? Let me know in the comments down below if you think that Kami secretly knew. I don't, I don't think he probably did, but never know. As for Son Goku here, during the tournament, Son Goku would also know the fact that he can also fly. He would even try going out into space, and guess what? He can breathe and well, he can hold his breath in space. And he stayed up there for a little while, and he could fly around, and he wasn't worried about it. As Son Goku doesn't know that you can hold your breath for up to two weeks in space per Viltrumite, as Viltrumites are actually extremely fast in terms of flight. So, Goku was able to travel to the moon, he's able to travel around the solar system, and he was perfectly fine. Now, during the tournament, Goku would win a lot faster. As Son Goku was already one of the strong, pretty much the strongest being there, Piccolo is the only one who could rival him, Son Goku here being physically way more powerful than his original self, as we see, even saw beings like, of course, Nolan, who is a little bit older, but Mark was 19 years old to 18 years old. He was able to match his father in strength. Nolan's able to pick up things like submarines and pick up things that are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of tons, even while Goku from the Buu Saga couldn't even hold up 40 tons. So in terms of physical lifting strength, Son Goku is a lot more powerful. And I believe in terms of fighting power, Son Goku's stronger as well, because the lifting strength is a bit similar to the hitting strength. Son Goku would dominate Piccolo in their fight, being able to fly, being a lot faster, and if Piccolo also fires his mouth beam, you guys have to understand that when Goku drops his guard, it doesn't still hurt him as bad. As we know in Dragon Ball Z lore, when someone drops their guard and their key drops, of course, a simple shotgun blast or a simple bullet can kill them and hurt them, but not for Son Goku because Viltrumites, they can't lower their power like that. They're just naturally that strong. So the beam would still hit Goku and it would still hurt him, but it would not go completely through his arm and it would not cripple his arm. So even if Son Goku dropped his guard against Piccolo and Piccolo still did a sneak attack on him, it wouldn't work as Son Goku might just have a burn mark there. Son Goku would have easily defeated Piccolo and due to the Viltrumites, their military mindset, doesn't really matter because Mark is obviously different as well. Being a half-breed and being hybrid, Mark sees differently. Son Goku sees the same. As Son Goku would spare Piccolo, as he knows that if Piccolo dies, Kami would then die as well. As he would then still meet with Chi Chi the same as before, as they still became best friends during the Dragon Ball saga. And he did still promise to marry her one day, but he didn't know what it was. She would be happy, and then the two would finally get married, and then five years would then pass, as Son Goku here has grown much stronger. You guys have to understand that Son Goku would have a similar potential, or way higher potential than even Mark, as Mark, by the age of 19 years old, 
he was able to match Nolan and others in such a short few years because of his potential. And also being the perfect hybrid, which I feel like Son Goku is. Son Goku would still continue to train for the five years, but he was kind of taking it easy as it was peaceful. Gohan would still be born, and Gohan would be a pretty odd mixture, having three different races within him, being part Viltrumite, part Saiyan, and part human as well. So Gohan will be a powerhouse, but we'll get to that shortly. Now the Viltrumite will most likely overcome the human DNA because humans and Viltrumites are so similar in terms of their DNA structure that it will kind of take it over. So we're going to argue that that's the case until Gohan's roughly a young man, until he's about 18 to 20 years old, similar to Goku. Raditz would still appear searching for his brother, which Raditz knows about the fact that Frieza killed their father because of that. He knows about it, as the Saiyan Empire is actually still alive. Frieza never destroyed it, as he needs the Saiyans to fight these Viltrumites for him, as these Viltrumites are still going to war with the Saiyan Empire. So Raditz will recruit his brother, as he thinks that maybe this will be a perfect thing to kind of team up with him and Vegeta, and Raditz can just say that, oh, this is just my hidden brother, you know, don't know about him. So because of this, Raditz would then see that Kakarot has not done his job. The planet is still thriving, it's still living, what's going on? He would still meet Goku on Kame's house, and he would try to take Son Gohan, but this is where something's going to change. As by this point, with the beings like Goku, Goku here is a lot more powerful than his original self, as we know that Goku had a power level of around 416 when he fought Raditz. But, you know, since Goku's part Viltrumite here, with the potential of both of those species pushing his power even more, some Goku would have a power level of around 1,500, so he's pretty much equal to his brother Raditz. The, the two would begin fighting on the islands, as Raditz was shocked by how powerful his brother was, as they were evenly matched. But Son Goku has more abilities than sadly Raditz does. As Son Goku would then charge up a Kamehameha, Raditz would then charge up a double Sunday, but Goku's Kamehameha wave is more powerful than this blast. Son Goku would then fire it using all of his strength, and it would hit Raditz full force and go right through his stomach, killing Raditz. As Raditz would then collapse onto the ground, Goku would then talk about, look, maybe we can wish you back with the Dragon Balls if you want. And Raditz would not know what that is, and Krillin would be like, what are you, crazy? Why would we wish him back? As Goku states, well, he's not that bad, he's just, you know, a bit misguided. As that's normal with Goku. Goku wasn't expecting the Kamehameha wave to go through Raditz's stomach. He wasn't expecting that, but he had to do what he had to do to protect his friends. He would then tell Raditz that the Dragon Balls are these magical orbs that can grant any wish. Now this would perk Vegeta's interest. Vegeta and Nappa would then beeline it right towards Earth, as Vegeta can wish for immortality and rule over both empires. Frieza also heard of this as well, so now he's heading to planet Namek. And guess funny enough, the Viltrumites have intercoms that can listen in to the scouters as well, and they've been listening to hacks and communications. As remember, this is a war. They were able to pick up about wishing orbs, and that is where Frieza is heading. So they will decide to send a few of their Viltrumites undercover as they go undercover as Frieza's forces, as it's pretty easy to blend in with them. As they have some mixed breeds as well to go undercover to Planet Namek to recover these wishing orbs, because that means that Thrag, he can wish for immortality, or he can wish to become stronger and to make the Viltrumite Empire thrive. And that is it for this What If You Guys. Thank y'all for watching. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Let me know what you guys think about mixing these two animes together. Now, I want you guys to be ready as the next part of this What If, if the first one does well. So make sure to like it and share it with your friends. If this video gets to 200 likes, I shall continue on to the next part. And the next part will be full out chaos. You guys will be shocked with how much writing this will have. Anyway, thank you all so much for the support. You guys are the best. I also want to tell you guys something real quick if you have made it this far into the video. So I have posted it on my community page, but for some of those who have not seen it, I have basically stated that I'm doing two new What If series, one after the other. I've stated that I am starting this one currently, and I'm going to go as far as I can go with this series until it sadly drops, or until I can finish it up and put it as a movie. So let's just say a few weeks from now, I am also going to be doing a One Piece crossover. It's going to be, what if Son Goku ate the human-human devil fruit? 
this fruit is what Luffy eats, and this same fruit is what gave him the power to connect to the Sun God and also gives him the imagination powers and, of course, the power of Gear 5 to Gear so on. So because of this, I hope you guys are ready and be excited for that, as it's the first time I'll be doing a crossover like that on my channel with One Piece. Anyway, thank you all so much for the support. You guys are the best. Let's get to 20,000 subscribers, and I'll talk to you all later.